you always want a slow trickle of amino acids. You never want a, a flush of amino acids because the, the protein synthesis just occurs so rarely. Like we said, even 20 grams a day is, is about the max rate of muscle growth you can have. So it hardly ever happens. I mean, it's, it's a rare event. It's like, it's like getting laid after you get married. I mean, it, you know, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen in bursts anymore. Okay, I'll start this from a physics. Uh, okay, I'll start this from a physics standpoint, and I'll say there's a thermodynamics law called the law of conservation of energy, which cannot be violated. And every physicist for the last hundred plus years has tried to prove it's violated. And if you violate it even once, you you're guaranteed automatic Nobel Prize. No no questions asked. Do not pass go. Get your Nobel Prize. Become a world famous physicist. And so. At the end of the day, what matters is calories. Calories are a measure of energy. All a calorie is, the way we, we use kilocalories, which is the amount of heat energy it takes to uh, raise one kilogram of water one degree Celsius. That's all it is. We store energy in the body three different ways, glycogen, fat, and muscle. And so there is some variation and you can, you can and why I do, I, I can branch into why I do carb cycling, because it do, there is some way where you can eat excess calories and store those calories specifically as glycogen instead of storing them as fat. But at the end of the day, any, any diet that is sufficiently low in calories, meaning less, you eat less calories than you burn, you will lose weight. You will lose energy. But that goes back to what, what I said, where you store energy three different ways. You can lose glycogen, which you always will lose early on. You can lose fat and you can lose muscle. Uh, and so really there isn't as big of a difference between, between a uh, as long as you're eating sufficient, co co complete proteins throughout the day, and so your blood amino acid levels are relatively high and stabilized, there isn't that much difference between a uh, pr high protein, high fat, really low carb diet and a uh, protein, high carb, really low fat diet. As long as the calories are low, both of the diets will work and you will burn fat predominantly over muscle. Now the reason I like to use a higher carbohydrate approach, specifically with my high carb days, is because of, the, because of its allowance to have you eat uh, hypercaloric for a period of time, which means eating more calories than you burn for a certain period of time without storing fat. When you go low, low calorie, low carb uh, for a period of time and you deplete your glycogen stores and say someone, someone my size can easily store a thousand grams of glycogen. And I might also burn, burn 500 grams of carbohydrates in a given day. So I can deplete my calories which also causes the body to start decreasing its metabolism. Slowing down your metabolism is gonna slow down your results. So I can deplete my glycogen, but then bring in a ton of carbohydrates for a high carb day. And like I said, I, maybe, I'm a, maybe I'm depleted 1,000 grams of glycogen, and I also burn 500 grams of glycogen with my normal metabolic rate. That means on that day, I can eat 1,500 grams of carbohydrates without storing a single gram of fat with all those grams of carbohydrates going to re replenish muscle glycogen and to be burned in my normal metabolism. What that does is it allows a metabolic boost. My body is out of that hypocaloric state where my metabolism wants to slow down and it goes into a hypercaloric state where it actually does store energy, but it stores that energy as carbohydrate, as glycogen rather than as fat. That's why I like to use carbohydrate cycling diets which tend to be higher in carbohydrates. Now, a, a uh, a high protein, high fat, very low carbohydrate diet will also work as long as it's less calories than, than you burn. The problem is that type of diet, the way most people set it up, typically, typically doesn't allow you that hypercaloric day to help maintain your, uh, maintain your metabolism and refill glycogen stores. But there really isn't as big of a difference and both diets will work. I believe the, the higher carbohydrate approach, I, I believe most people have more success with that. But either diet approach will work. And uh, the part two was included in that. He was saying he prefers food other than, other, food other than uh, protein powder. But other than that, what other supplements do you recommend other than protein powder? <laughs> really? I don't really even recommend protein powder. I think a, a whole, a, a meat or egg source protein is always probably better than a protein powder. And the problem is, is I'll explain why, because most protein powders are whey protein, which is really rapidly digested. And a lot of people think that's great, I'll take it after my workout, replenish, uh, replenish blood amino acid levels. The, the, the thing is, even after a workout, if you've been eating meat six times a day, you're never low in, in blood amino acid levels. Everyone at some point in their life has, 
has eaten a bunch of meat, gotten sick later, and maybe thrown up seven hours after eating a steak and puked up a bunch of that steak, meaning even seven hours after eating it, there's still a lot of undigested steak. Uh, the, the problem with, with whey protein is, and most people don't realize this, the vast majority of the protein you eat isn't used as a protein in the body, it's used as a carbohydrate. People think, oh, I don't know, that doesn't make any sense. Well, imagine someone eating 500 grams of protein a day. 500 grams is a pound, roughly. You, someone eating, if they were using that 500 grams of protein as actual protein, meaning it gets synthesized as new protein in the body, which is muscle, they'd be gaining a pound of muscle a day. Now, obviously, people aren't gaining a pound of muscle a day. And actually, if you break it down, someone who gains about a pound a month or 75 pounds in five years, which is someone like Justin Compton, or, I mean, that's rapid growth. Someone gaining 75 pounds of pure muscle in five years, they go from a, a 200 pound bodybuilder to a 275 Mr. Olympia competitor. That's only about 20 grams of protein a day being used as protein. So it, even if of all the protein you eat, only 20 grams gets used as, as actual protein, meaning it synthesizes new muscle in the body, you're gaining at about the most rapid rate of growth you can gain. Now there's other, issue, other things that require protein, natural muscle breakdown, natural tissue, natural tissue breakdown that gets used. Let's say that's maybe 50 additional grams a day. So that's 70 grams of protein a day that is actually used as protein. The rest is used as carbohydrates. Now, why am I bringing all that around with whey protein? Well, whey protein gets, di gets digested extremely rapidly. So if you eat 50 grams of pro whey protein and, it, and it's digested in an hour and a half, how much of that do you think has any chance to be used as an actual protein to build new muscle in the body? And actually, you can test this. You could, you could uh, go hypoglycemic and drink a, a whey protein shake with no carbohydrates and reverse the hypoglycemia because that, that whey gets converted through gluconeogenesis to glucose so quickly that it almost acts as a carbohydrate in the body. So that's long-winded reason why I only like protein drinks as a, as a true supplement, meaning when I can't eat a whole food meal for, for whatever reason. The only other supplements I recommend is I like to use essential amino acids and a, and a high molecular weight carbohydrate around your workout, whether it's highly branched cyclodextrins, carbolin, or a waxy maize product. I like to drink that during my workout. But other than that, I'm not, I shouldn't say that. Another supplement I actually like for health and joint issues is curcumin, which I've, I've, I've been using the last year or two. And it's really reduced my anti-inflammatory use. But that, those, are, those are pretty much the only supplements. I'm, I'm gonna stay on the, the protein topic here and I'm gonna fall back to a college course I took here so I could really, really just crap this and vomit it out on the table and completely be wrong. But from, <laughs> But it, it kind of goes along with what he was saying here a little bit, and it's kind of ringing some bells from a nutritional biochem course that I took. Protein in its simplest form is basically a carbon shell with a nitrogen, yep. Yep. all right? And when there's excess protein, what happens? Nitrogen gets yep. kicked off, carbon shell gets converted to fat, or yep. usually it's fat. Yep. And so through the digestion of protein into your mouth, through the gut, through the villus, only you, the whole protein structure can't digest. It yep. has to be broken down into amino acids. Yep. So if you're and it, get, can I cut it? it gets denatured. And so all the people who say, don't put your meat in the microwave, it denatures it. All that's doing is doing what your stomach has to do for you to even be able to digest the yep. protein. So if, if somebody has the perfect amino acid blend, it really doesn't fucking matter because it's not gonna digest through the villus, yeah. you know, into the bloodstream before it's broken down. Yeah. So it, what I don't remember, two things I don't remember, is how long the strand of amino acids can pass through with the digestion, and then how long will the amino acids last in what I think was called the amino acid pool, yeah. you know, hour-wise. I think it's di and tri aminos. Yes. It's what it gets eventually broken down to. So then how long, because this is how we were learning, you know, different ethnicities, how they don't have meat, but yeah. vegetarian diets with rice and beans yeah. at yeah. different yeah. times form complete proteins. Yeah. Yep. And if it's three hours in your system, then it really doesn't matter if, you know what I'm saying? For as far as complete protein, if, if say there's a cell right here and you worked out and mTOR came along and triggered protein synthesis and the body wants to, wants to add a, an extra finger, which would be a new t you know, strand of tissue or muscle or thicken the fingers or whatever, all 20 amino acids have to be present at that moment. Okay. But the thing is, only 11 of them have to come from the diet. The, the essential amino acids, is it nine or 11? Can I, uh, can't remember if I get them reversed now. The essential amino acids have to come from the diet. The body can 
if those essential amino acids are available at that site and there's other amino acids floating in the, in the body, the body can take those essential amino acids, those extra ones, and convert them to non-essential amino acids to complete that protein. But at, at, they all have to be available at that site at that moment. But they sit in the bloodstream for, you know, I mean, when you eat, that's why I like food-based proteins like meat because it's a slow trickle of those amino acids. And so muscle growth doesn't happen like, bam, it happens like, you know, I've been eating protein, eating protein all day and all of a sudden this one cell is ready to build new muscle yeah. and you need all those proteins available. So if you ate, if you had whey that morning and have had no other protein source and that all, that, those, all those amino acids have hit the bloodstream, there was no trigger for protein synthesis, they've all been converted to carbohydrates or fat and stored elsewhere and that, then that, that trigger for protein synthesis occurs, it can't happen. So meal timing does actually become of some importance yeah. to a degree. Yeah, yeah. It, it can become, and it becomes l much less important the slower digesting the protein you eat, which is why I like the meat proteins and the egg protein. And that's, and it becomes, if, you, if you're going to, if you're going to eat fast digesting proteins like whey, it becomes extremely important because if you're not constantly supplying the, the blood with new aminos, you can totally miss those, those, those windows of, of growth. So once a day feeding is probably not a good idea, unless you got a ton of fucking fat. With yeah, if you, but, and, and that's why, yeah, it, but if you have a ton of fucking fat with yeah. it. And then, yeah. Then well, let's explain that because they probably don't understand because yeah. when I was working with you, that's how we, my last meal before bed. Yeah, yeah we'd add fat to slow the, fat, the digestion. Slow the digestion. Yeah, the fat will slow the digestion. We, we, the last meal of the day, always do, if you're going to do a shake, never do whey. Always do something like casein that digests more slowly. And then I always add fat to that last meal of the day because you're going to go to bed and sleep for six, seven, eight, nine hours. And with no, and, and that, that trigger for protein synthesis, might, you, you might have had a great leg workout and your body decides at 2 a.m. that it's ready to build muscle. And we need to make sure that there's amino acids available. And so we add fat to the meal, which slows the digestion. The, 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 the protein sits in your stomach longer. It, it goes to the small intestine longer. It gets, the amino acids get broken down more slowly. And so you have a long, slower trickle of those amino acids. And you never want to, you never want a, you always want a slow trickle of amino acids. You never want a, a flush of amino acids because the, the protein synthesis just occurs so rarely. Like we said, even 20 grams a day is, is about the max rate of muscle growth you can have. So it hardly ever happens. I mean, it's, it's a rare event. It's like, it's like getting laid after you get married. I mean, it, you know, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't happen in bursts anymore. <laughs> so the, um, just to, to, um, to reiterate or kind of bring this back a little bit full circle, you know, he's talking muscle hypertrophy, muscle growth, that that's that's synonymous with those that are just powerlifting and strength with recovery. Yeah. So the it's 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 the same thing. It's the same mechanics. You're going to need the protein for the muscle to recover. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind that if you're a powerlifter, this still ha this still pertains. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to have that shake, you don't want it to be slower digesting yeah. at night, and you need to be able to have the protein to be able to help to recover. It may not necessarily be to build muscle mass, and it. It could be debated if it needs to be as much, but it still is needed for recovery. Without it, you're not going to And something that. powerlifters do to gain weight that they, they do that, that helps them recover and helps them maintain or build muscle mass, and I don't think they have any intention doing it, is when, when they to try to slow their metabolism down, they go from six meals a day to maybe two big meals a day. And those two big meals a day are almost always high protein, high fat, high, I mean high everything, yeah. but high fat meals. And that the only, really the only reason that really works is because of that added fat. If you turn those high calorie meals into, I don't know, if you could find a way to stomach, you know, eight cups of rice and 10 scoops of, of protein and doing that twice a day, you'd get the same amount of calories as eating really high fat meals, high protein meals, but you wouldn't get the same benefit because they get, got digested so fast and you actually wouldn't recover from the workouts. Yeah. And the other, the other thing too with a lot of lifters that I think bears mention is if they're not really following a diet of any sort, which most don't, they're, they're typically always gonna err on the, on the side of higher carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. the, the higher your carbohydrate level, the lower your protein requirements yeah. are gonna be because that, as we talked about kicking that nitrogen shell off, using the protein to be converted as fat for energy. You don't need that because you're using the carbohydrates for the energy and the protein is being used for the muscle recovery. Okay. And a perfect example of that, for, as far as from the bodybuilding standpoint, is Jay Cutler. Uh, he used to eat as, as few as 180 grams of protein a day. 
and that sounds crazy. How can you be so big at 180 grams of protein a day? Well, he'd eat 1,500 grams of carbohydrates, and so that reduced the amount of that that protein didn't need to be used for outside energy sources. It wasn't stored as carbohydrates or to convert to carbohydrate, carbohydrates. It wasn't used as, or stored as fat. The, it, because of that extreme high carbohydrate intake, that lower amount of protein had a much better chance of being used for protein synthesis because it wasn't being shuttled for these, it, that nitrogen shell wasn't being pulled off as much because it wasn't needed to be. Yeah.